the floor to Israel, followed by Canada and Italy. Israel has the floor. Madam President of the General Assembly, Rabbi Goldstein, distinguished Chabad rabbis, ambassadors, delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the President of the General Assembly and Member States for making this important event possible. Thank you. When I look at anti-Semitism today, I often wonder, is this 2019? Or is it 1939, when 38% of European Jews have considered leaving the EU for fear of their safety? Are we in 2019 or 1939? When more Jews were killed in anti-Semitic violence last year than during any other year in decades, is this 2019 or 1939? And when Jews and Jewish organizations in the U.S. alone face nearly 2,000 attacks in just one year, 2019 or 1939? In today's world, many Jews cannot walk down the street without fearing for their lives. Jews cannot engage on social media without encountering hostility and threats. And as we saw in Pittsburgh and Poway, as Rabbi Goldstein just said, as Lori Kay's daughter, Hannah, and sister, Randy, who are here with us today, are reminded every day, in today's world, Jews cannot even pray in the synagogue without checking behind their backs for a gunman. Although it may feel as though we have traveled back in time to our world's darkest chapter, it is indeed 2019. 80 years have passed since 1939, and this time our world is capable of defeating anti-Semitism. We just need the right leadership, the right tools, the right weaponry to take it down. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the anti-Semites have declared war on the Jewish people. It is time for us to declare war on anti-Semitism. The world's approach to eradicating anti-Semitism must be like that of modern warfare. It must attack on multiple fronts through multiple means, starting on the national level. Every nation has the following set of responsibilities when it comes to defeating anti-Semitism. First, digital, employing aggressive media policies to target and shut down anti-Semitic accounts. This also includes social media monitoring, working with social media experts to find and remove hate speech, hate symbols, and hate crimes. Second, education, enacting legislation that requires schools to teach anti-Semitism and its many definitions, including those with regard to delegitimizing and denouncing the Jewish state of Israel. Third, nations must fund the full and robust training of all law enforcement personnel to identify anti-Semites. We must bring them to justice. And finally, all nations must take swift and unequivocal action to remove all anti-Semitic politicians from political office. These are the responsibilities of each nation. The responsibilities of the world are simple and strategic. It is us, 
the international community responsibility to change the conversation and plan of action around anti-Semitism. The UN must channel its founding principles and promises set in stone in the immediate aftermath of the Holocaust and fight the ill it was created to defeat, for anti-Semitism did not end with the Holocaust. I therefore today call on the UN to take three deliberate actions. First, produce an annual investigative report on anti-Semitism around the world. Second, appoint a special envoy of the SG for combating anti-Semitism. And third, to add ending anti-Semitism to the Sustainable Development Goals. In times of danger, we must resort to drastic measures. We do not have time to beat around the bush while that bush is burning from the flames of anti-Semitism. When Jews are dying in this fire, we cannot weaken our responses for the sake of political correctness. The gunshots in Poway and Pittsburgh have destroyed that luxury. Ladies and gentlemen, war on anti-Semitism is the only answer. The responses I have outlined today are the only responses that stand a chance to eradicate anti-Semitism. These actions are bold, and we will not hold back in embracing them. You, me, and all the leaders of the world will take that pledge today and every day to fight the war on anti-Semitism until anti-Semitism is eradicated. Thank you. I thank the permanent representative of Israel for his statement.